Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Valigar Alivain, back for some more Dungeons and Dragons Online. So for this video here, uh, again, it's we're going to finish up the Ravenloft chain. So we are again here in Van Richten's Tower. So we're going to want to talk to Esmeralda. And they're actually mentioning we should head to the Abbey. Now this is the final part to this chain. Uh, and the only one in this chain that has to be done last. So Yesterhill, the Runes of Berez, and Wizard of the Wines, you can travel to all three of these places and do the quests there in any order. Though Esmeralda here does have a specific order that she pref like requests you do them in, it honestly doesn't matter. All that matters is you gotta complete these three and that'll allow you to actually be able to talk to the NPC here to pick up the final part. Now the quest itself is fairly straightforward. I know a lot of them, I know I say that often, as a lot of these quests, they are straightforward. So we're gonna go ahead and pick up the uh, quest itself and jump right in. All right, so let's get ourselves a hireling. All right, so for this one here, the first thing that we do want to do is we're going to want to talk to Madame Eva and have her tell us our fortune. A place of kindness and madness, a place of song and shadow. Seek the light in the bishop's bed. She sleeps among the monks of old. So as they're going, they will mention... Where healing turned to horror. Um, a couple of little points. So seek the light where the bishops, uh, in the bishop's bed. So we do need to find. I see a wizard who has slept through the ages. His bed is cold, and his blanket is made of marble. All right. Be wary, traveler. Many enemies will oppose you. Perhaps a friend as well. So as you're talking to her, she does send out three. They do pop up in the DM narration. Now the one that you're wanting to look for is where they say the light is. So seek the light in and then they'll tell you a location. So this one here is the bishop's bed. The other bit is, so there we got the ancient tomb. That would be our bishop's bed. Now they can have a few locations that it'll spawn in, but ultimately, if you just pay attention to the the initial conversation, they do give you they do give you some pretty good clues as to where specifically they have hidden it. And the other bit that makes it super easy to figure it out is so we have it sleeps among the monks of old. That that is the graveyard. Um, so as you can see right there, the ancient tome. We're able to interact with that, meaning that is where it is hidden and kind of gone. If we had stepped into the quest and this was not an option, then it wouldn't have chosen this one, and it would have given us something else that we can interact throughout the area. Open the chamber door. And there's our sun sword. The other thing that we need to locate. Um, so the other thing. Oh. All right, there we go. So the other thing we we need to keep an eye out for is our tarnished key. Now this will be somewhere on the outer grounds. Our outer grounds. And uh, we do need it to progress inside. So the other one that they had mentioned was we see a wizard who has slept through the ages and his bed is cold. So that would be this one here, the cold crypt. And again, interacting with this to open up the door, it's going to spawn in an enemy for us to deal with. 
as something rises from it. So again, you're not guaranteed to run into this optional here specifically. Uh, it does just depend on the run. Alright, so once we have the Tarnish Key, which again be can be located anywhere on the other outer uh, section. So as you saw where, where it was, it can also kind of be in the corner there on the box where the, the note is. It can also be over here in this section here. All right. So now that we have that, we want to head over here and actually head into here where we're going to see a couple of wild men. Two strange creatures guard the entrance. Or rather, not wild men, but. Uh, kind of beastly approach. creations as you see kind of a bird like talon on his left foot the uh, lizard arm on the r left arm and then the monkey half on the other half so at this point the door with the, the key. key he will use door the key to open. unlock the door and then we can progress inside if you don't have the key he'll just say go find the key but the outside is super, super small. All right, so at this point, we're gonna enter into the kind of a chapel. Who moves with the grace of a saint. Welcome, stranger. Let this be a refuge of warmth and light in a cold, dark world. All right, so what you need to do is proceed and talk to them there. Let me know what you think of my hand. At this point, we're going to start heading south, and while we are, we're going to run into these Abbot's Journals. There's going to be a lot of them, uh, a total of five. Uh, they are all numbered, and you you run into them consecutively. So the next journal we should run into is part two, then three, four, and five. If, however, the next one we ran into was part three, it does just mean that you missed one, and need to head back to look for it. Obviously, if that's something you're wanting to do. Now, the locations of them can also slightly change, um, which is why I don't want to point out specifically where they are located. As I have noticed them change locations, sometimes that one's down there, sometimes it's up here, sometimes there's only one in this room. Either way, stands in one corner of the room, lost in her own thoughts. Either way, it is they are all in consecutive order. So, however it's set up, just uh, make sure that in our case the next one we find is number three, and we'll be fine. So as you see around the outer edge at the top here, which you can fall off, so just be careful. If you fall off, you just gotta head back in the door and back up and out. Um, but as you can see, they have a whole bunch of these scarecrows again. And once you run past them, it will trigger them. I like to run past pretty much everybody. Kind of trigger a large group, just like the other quests. And take them out here. Now you're also going to run across some that are stuck on the other side of the wall. Like this, uh, like these couple right here. The only way to kill them, uh, as they are stuck, is to have some sort of blast damage like fireball. 
as they do die quickly to fireball, it really doesn't take a lot of time to do that. And then just head across. The reason I like to stop and kill them, and of course they're not, those ones aren't good. Um, yeah, so the reason I like to stop and kill them is just to ensure that we get as many kills as possible. As you see, some of them don't want to get up, so I, that's why I typically try to rush past and summon as many as I can. Uh, that way we can get as m the most amount of kills out of it as, as we can. The more we get, the closer we get to conquest. The dust that covers most of this room shows that it is seldom used. Alright, so the next hint that they had given us, uh, which was, where was it here? A blessing lies hidden where healing turned to horror. That, that line, the healing turned to horror, it refers to this room here. Or rather, an offshoot of this room. So as you can see, we do have operating room, nursery, and morgue. We also have this lever on the wall. Now we do need to pull this lever, which will open up our door to continue in. We can also go into these side rooms here as well. So healing turn to horror would be one of these rooms. So it wasn't this one here. Turned out, they counted as the nursery. So this is the, the blessing that they were talking about was that small shrine. So it will be located somewhere within the quest. And again, they will mention it. I definitely recommend picking it up uh, as you'll see when I select this one here in particular heightened defenses it is going to give us additional ranged power oh no that's the wrong one it's going to give us additional hit points and then our PRR had also PR and MR had also gone up and it also gave us additional armor class so it does make us a little bit tankier and I'm just going to pop in here to make sure that we didn't have any of the, the scrolls left behind. Alright, so at this point we're gonna head on through and unnerving screams and head downstairs so here we are gonna have some roving flesh golems now these guys they just have a, a fairly high um, resistance to damage and actually do a decent amount of damage themselves unfortunately there is not really any safe spots to fight them in this section so if you happen to have a tank, awesome, but their aggro also kind of isn't a static aggro, and it likes to jump around a lot, making it uh, fairly hard to hold down a legit aggro.
Alright, so now that they're deleted, uh, we can continue on here. I'm just going to give ourselves a top up. So, what you'll notice here is the far north, we did have a note, which we can interact with. Uh, the note isn't what we need, though. It's not one of the, the journals. For this section, uh, there'll be a bunch of doors on both the northern and southern section of the hallway. They will open up bit by bit. So, I like to spawn the turret in. And then I'll draw the first wave back a little bit. Um, just because we've got the champions. There we go. But as you ke kill each wave, it will spawn in another wave. So it's going to open up another door. They're going to come in. And it's going to be the same thing a few times. Now this doesn't mean that there's nobody in the other rooms. It just means that these are the ones that are scripted to auto open for you. As you see there, it opened up the rooms. Now, I am going to go back and open up the other rooms. As they can have... One, they have... Some of them have collectibles. They may have one of the, the Abbott's journal notes. As well, additional kills for... To work towards conquest. Um, and if, uh, depending on the clue that you receive, this actually might be one of the rooms here where we'll have the sun sword. So it's always good to just check these the mongrel min rooms to see if it's in there as well So there's our part four, which is hiding in this room here. All right. So once you've cleared them all, or whether or not you've chosen to clear them all, you're going to want to head to the far eastern section and remove these blockade. So what you after you reach this point in the quest, you can now return to the abbot and tell them what they think of the abbey. Um which your thoughts aren't very high. So again, he's located just in that same room that he was before <clears throat> and the reason I suggest clearing that blockade first is it allows that f kind of a, a quick spot back to that location rather than having to run all the way around alright so so your thoughts are not good 
and you tell him as such. Says the abbot. At which point he kind of gets super super angry and lashes out. Now the person I find the hardest to kill is actually her. Um, the big bad boss, if you happen to have, I believe it is, it's either Chaos or Law. Um, so... Alright, so it is lawful weapons. So if you have... Why is it not? No, it's making me wonder what he, uh, was. Oh, right, it's it's uh, evil weapons, not uh, chaos weapons. So yeah, if you happen to have evil, it will bypass his DR. And, uh, but as you see, he drops fairly easily himself. And he does give you a chest. Now this chest can contain named items. Again, as well as the items, the, the macabre items and weapons, sorry kind of tripping over my own words uh, once you kill him you do want to exit the door and head back to the door we left the one that we unbarricaded that or you can make your way all the way around uh, especially if you miss any of those journals gives you a, a second chance to look once you find yourself back in the this corridor you're going to want to go to the very last door on the uh, the southern section or if you just come through this one here it's the very first one and here we have the root cellar so the first bit is as you approach the lever it's kind of going to spawn in some of these shadows Just watch yourself. All right, and then once you pull that first lever, you're going to want to head north. And hop on down. Now again, we're going to have a few, ooh, a bunch of lag, but we're going to have a few spawns of the shadows here again. So just watch yourself. We're also down here going to have a couple of crests. Now you don't have to look too hard for them as our door is right here so they will be someplace either in this room or the room to the east there And the other one will be in here. Now in here, as you see, we can also run into these zombie arms. And here's our second crest. And our fifth journal, there we go. So as you see, it's about a thousand experience. It's not a lot, but all the journals are along the path that you have to take. So, I mean, it's extra experience that you're going past anyway. So, our door to the north is locked, and behind it, it does just have a loot chest. Which is also locked. No traps, no nothing, just a couple of lockpicks. Get in and get yourself some free random loot. 
from here, enter in your sockets, and proceed forward. Now we do have a section off to the north, which as you can see has a giant blade trap. Uh, there is no box for this blade trap, you just gotta kinda run past, hopefully not get hit like I did, and here we just have a lever. Pulling the lever will disable the trap. And that's how you, that one. So it's completely not needed. It just has a collectible and some breakables, but I like the collectibles. For this next bit, as you approach the door heading west, it's gonna bust open and have a whole bunch of these walking corpses. Now, if you are looking to get a whole lot of zombie kills and actually get your conquest in this quest, this is going to be the section that you're going to want to do it, as that dismal shrine will endlessly spawn these walking corpses, and as you see, it is giving count in killing them. Now they do spawn at a fairly decent rate. But, again, it takes a lot of kills in order to get that, and we're actually almost here at the end of the quest. So, as you see, we don't even have the first tier bonus. We're almost at the end. It really is up to you whether or not you want to waste the time in order to get it, or if you just want to move on. And again, it will continuously spawn them until you attack and destroy the shrine. At which point it does stop the uh, spawning. Once you've done that, all that's left is to head through the door. Make your way down the hall to our final end room. So if you did need that shrine, that is the last shrine before the boss fight. Now, as soon as you get in here, you're gonna wanna actually head over to the door here and just open that up. A decrepit shrine overlooks a and this allows Irina inside. You open the gate and let Irina into the now you're gonna need to wait until there she walks are. over here. This seems so familiar. I'm sure I've never been here before. And once once she walks over and stops walking, we can actually talk to her and give her the sun sword. I also want to point out that throughout this area, sometimes you can actually run into El Esmeralda as an NPC just kind of crouched somewhere. And if you talk to her, she will actually aid you in this fight, being an additional uh, a tar essentially an additional target for the boss to deal with. Alright, once you give them the sun sword, as you see, you place on the shrine, and as you can also see right now, um, there is a barrier preventing you from going any closer. However, shortly, suddenly, an image appears in the sparkling waters of the pool. Youth with a yeah, kind and pretty much design. once this uh, quote-unquote small bit of cinematic enjoy. ends, it's not really it's a cinematic, but it has been so long. this conversation, I guess, we'll actually be able to enter in this pool. Now that is important, Irina and I'll let you know why uh, once this here is done. Oh, we were to be married so long ago. Has this blessed pool called your spirit to me? As she reaches for Sergei, she is pulled down beneath the rippling water and into her lover's embrace. You have never seen a happier couple as they begin to fade from view. For a moment, all is quiet. Then a peal of thunder shakes the land, and a deep, dark voice from beyond the mountains cries out, Mine! Alright, so at this point, we can head into the water. Now, why I was mentioning that this is important is, as you see up top there, he has a very high damage reduction. 
However, when he's in the water, it hurts him. And as you can see, like it's greatly increased the amount of damage that he is taking. And as he takes damage, he will spawn in some enemies. And he's going to spawn in more as we get uh, further in. Make sure to stay out of those circles. So the other strategy is obviously to just kill him as fast as possible and then deal with the trash. Um, really doesn't want to come off of me, but... Again, we are also the only one fighting him. Alright, so here we go. So when he starts that, he's going to spawn in his second wave, which is some Dark Hellhounds. And he is, is um, a vampire, so he does regenerate hit points and regenerate them quite quickly. So if you are taking your time to fight everybody else, you may notice that by the time you get back to him, that he has regened a fair amount of hit points. And yeah, then just beat on him until he dies. There you go. Better to leave you alive. I can watch your dreams die slowly. With that, Strahd vanishes with the wind. All right, so at this point here, all we gotta do, though we already got the experience for completing, we can finish out. If you wait a little bit longer, you'll notice the sword lights up, and it'll eventually spawn in a chest. You pick up the sun sword. The instant you touch the hilt of the dazzling weapon, you realize that this is the weapon that could slay Strahd. That this is the key to ending his dominion. Something starts to grow within you. Alright, so once you grab your loot, I mean, you can finish listening to their conversation but not really needed. Uh, all that's left at this point is to recall back out. And then of course, turn in the quest. Here we are. From here, we can recall again to back to the, the tower itself. And then we can turn in the, the the chain uh, this chain completion for one additional reward and then finally if we head I believe it is the blue water in um, as we've now completed the full chain you will have enough favor or depending on which difficulty you can actually head into this room here turn in that favor And then finally, we can head over to the Blood on the Vine Tavern. And this will have our Saga Reward. So we can talk to this guy or this woman, depending on whether or not you've done it on Heroic or Epic. And depending on your score is obviously what you'll get for a reward. If you complete this chain on epic it will then open up for the uh the raid here and that has been ravenloft i hope you guys enjoyed running through this with me uh, i know i really enjoyed this is probably my favorite expansion in the game my favorite bit of content um, aside from one or two quests it's 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 my absolute favorite 
visually stunning and if you can I definitely recommend picking it up well thank you guys so much for joining I'll see you guys later have a good one all